Hi, you're watching Carbon Capture Canada's C3 series. I'm Rachel Gregory. Today, I am joined by Claude Letourneau, President and CEO of Savante. Claude, thank you for being here. Very nice being here, Rachel. Claude, how is Carbon Capture helping us reach our net zero goals? Atmospheric CO2 continues to rise uh, to uh, unprecedented levels due to human activities, as you know. So we, we continue to emit more CO2 than our natural system can, uh, can take care of. But this imbalance, which is about 18 gigatons per year, to fix this imbalance and reach the net zero uh, the world needs, several engineering solutions to avoid and manage carbon emissions are required on a global scale. You can do this through carbon capture of the source of emission, which is called point source, like from a cement factory, or you can remove the legacy CO2 from direct air capture, which what people refer to DAC, or biocapture, referring to what nature can pay with, with trees and, and pulp and paper industry is what they consider being carbon dioxide removal. Carbon management engineering solution like Svante, along with the other tools in the toolbox of climate change, like renewable, electrification of uh, vehicle, hydrogen, are all part of the fight against uh, climate change. We need to remove 37 gigatons per year of CO2. And, and that's going to be done at a cost of about $120 trillion. So to capture and remove CO2, that's about 2% of that budget, which is about $2 trillion. And but that will deliver roughly 20% of all the emission mitigation. So this is what we call the best bang for your buck. The world needs a, the equivalent of 10,000 carbon capture plants to be running over the next 30 years. And that's equivalent to about two plants every week that needs to be built in the next decade. Because carbon is deeply embedded into our global economy, if we want to enjoy all these products, it is impossible to be to out the production of all these commodities. So because of this, it is now becoming a necessity and the world needs to capture CO2 from industrial emission and safely store this underground or make other products out of it. Can you tell us a little bit more about Savante and your technologies? One, I'm going to go back 125 years ago. A scientist named Svante Arrhenius, hence the name Svante, is a Nobel Prize, and he identified the atmospheric carbon climate change connection. While at the same time, 125 years ago, we started the waste management industry, which is collecting all the, uh, the rubbish and the uh, for sanitary reasons, we pay no attention to the CO2 emission at the same time. The reason is that we could not smell or see CO2. So nature took care of our carbon management, but our natural filters are overloaded now. So we need an engineering solution to capture and remove CO2 created by human activities. So we've developed a very high efficient solid CO2 filter and capture system that can be installed in industrial plants, like a cement plant, and we will capture the CO2 from flue gas, where the concentration in that gas is about 8 to 20 percent. And we have a filter material that's also capable of capturing the CO2 from the atmosphere, where the concentration is much lower, like 0.04 percent. So that unique solid filter will catch and release pure CO2 in less than 60 seconds. Using a nano material that we've designed, it's a powder, and we coat on a sheet and then we stack to make a filter out of it. And we've developed also a rotary compactor that allows us to put the filter in and continuously catch and release the CO2 with a 95% efficiency. Let's talk about your CCUS demonstration plant. Can you delve further into what the next phase will be? We currently have industrial demonstration unit in the field since 2019 at customer site in Canada and in US including companies with like Sonovus in Saskatchewan, Chevron in California, and also here in Vancouver. We have a partnership also with a Swiss company called Climeworks, and we supply them filters for them to do direct air capture application. We're currently investing $80 million Canadian in a first commercial scale 
filter manufacturing factory in Vancouver that will be able to supply filters for more than 10 carbon capture plants a year by mid-2024. Thank you. So, Claude, how is the low-carbon tech ecosystem evolving in Canada? A great success case is to look at renewable. It's very awesome to see the progress renewable has made in the last 10 years in terms of cost and deployment. And this was only possible because two combined factors of investment tax credit, production tax credit, and feeding tariff were all available and, and provided positive return for those early projects. We need carbon management, this is a necessity. And we need to do the same thing for carbon capture and storage. So the cost to society of not managing your carbon is somewhere between $125 to $190 per ton of CO2. So we need what we call a carrot and a stick approach to monetize the carbon emission. So you see the gap between US at 105 subsidies versus 15 to 25 in Canada. So that's a gap. So it's gonna be difficult to deploy the carbon capture in, in North America, um, uh, in, in Canada, I mean, because US has a lot of incentive to do these things. But nevertheless, Zvante is building a global ecosystem, not just a Canadian one, but a global ecosystem for carbon management at gigaton scale with raw material supply chain partners like BSF in Germany, channel to market partners like QIT in North America, primarily in, in the US to do engineering and construction, and also CO2 storage of partners like Chevron to store the CO2. Thank you, Claude, for taking part in our C3 series, and we're excited to see you at Carbon Capture Canada this year. Thank you.